Well, some of you are gonna love this and some of you are gonna hate this. Welcome back everybody. We're here to talk about this little fella right here. And when it comes to Glock, I think this is the ultimate mix of parts when it comes to performance and reliability in a duty grade setup. I think some of you out there are gonna say yes and some of you out there are gonna say absolutely not. And you're gonna have to let me know which one you are down in the comments below as we go through the video. When it comes to all of the parts we're gonna talk about today on this 45 MOS here, these are either parts that I have personally tested for some time now. This is actually the culmination of parts over the past couple of years or things that I have thousands of rounds through them to ensure reliability, durability, accuracy, and the function that we are all looking for out of what is the Glock pistol. And to go with that, everything that is on this pistol right now, I know for a fact, some agencies have either authorized these things for carry use, I have personally carried for duty use, or have been used in recent scenarios out there in the world. And we'll talk more about those as we go through these parts. But first we gotta give some love to the sponsor and that's gonna be Hidden Hybrid Holster. If you're looking for the ultimate and suede backed leather Kydex front for concealability and comfort all day, make sure you check out Hidden Hybrid Holster. All US made, all US employed. They make clean and comfortable stuff you can carry around all day. Well, let's get into these parts one by one on this Glock 45 MOS. So we are gonna talk about the reasons why behind each of these, the performance, the reliability, and of course the maintained accuracy because that is a must when it comes to everything you see here in a duty grade pistol because the end goal of this setup here is maximum performance speed and reliability and we're going to start off with the radian afterburner ramjet that barrel and compensator combo right here because it is a combo you have to use both because of the way this thing is designed now the design behind this is much different than other threaded barrel and threaded compensators because up in the front, you're gonna have a triangular portion of the barrel, which is gonna self-time that compensator on there. It is generation specific, and it will have a single screw in the side, which you don't need to use thread locker in. It's kind of a taper screw that goes in there, ensures that that thing is not going anywhere, and provides you the easiest maintenance possible when it comes to a compensator. Now, if you don't know who Radiant is, they've been known for some time in the AR market, making some of the best parts out there from their safeties, their charging handles, and of course, some of the finest rifles out there in their Mod 1 style setups, full ambidextrous and really just precisely machine and performance driven stuff. So they delved into the market of Glock first with that afterburner ramjet comp barrel setup. I personally have put a few thousand rounds through the three of these ramjet afterburner combos that I have, and they have yet to fail me on Glock pistols or Glock clones like these shadow systems. I've used every type of ammunition from 115, 124, and 147 grain ammunition, whether it was just practice ammo, NATO ammo, or performance self-defense ammo, all of which was on factory recoil springs. And that is very important because this thing absolutely runs on the factory spring. There is an aftermarket spring out there. I've not had to use it, and I've had great performance out of this thing with zero malfunctions. So not only does this combo absolutely look badass, it flat out performs, and I think you can see that in the slow motion footage. And if I'm remembering right, I think Radian actually says there's something like 40% recoil reduction when it comes to that barrel and comp combo. And again, check the slow motion footage out and you be the judge. I know that's not an in-depth review of that barrel and comp, but this is just more an overall of the setup and the parts on it. So what are our performance gains out of the comp and the barrel combo here? There are a couple things that come to mind. Performance. We are going to be able to keep that muzzle flatter which is gonna keep our sights or our dot on target, and we're going to be able to get faster follow-up shots. So far less perceived recoil means the gun's on target, dot's on target, and you can press that trigger 
and get faster shots off, which is really important, especially for my competitors. As far as the accuracy goes, that's all going to be up to the end user being you. And just in case you guys are wondering, all of these things will be listed at the parts list. That's the first link in the description down below. So you can check them out, do all of your own research, and of course, pick anything up should you desire. And also, if you guys like this content, you find it informative, entertaining, or just valuable, make sure you subscribe to the channel. One, it's going to help me out. Two, make sure you don't miss any videos. But it's just overall going to push our message to more people, which is just a good thing in the end. Next up is going to be the SLR Magwell right there. And I know that some of you guys love it when I show the range flubs out there, when I just don't get the magazine in there right. And if you guys really press yourselves on the range and you try to speed up, eventually you're going to meet a failure point. That's when you kind of back off and smooth out your angles a little bit or just work drills a little bit more to get that speed back. Now, the SLR Magwell is something that I've personally carried for a very long time, both on and off duty, and it is absolutely my favorite magwell out on the market today when it comes to something like a magwell or any other part they are not crutches for bad fundamentals so if your fundamentals are good parts like a magwell or anything else we're going to talk about today can help speed you up maybe help dial you in a little bit and just overall help the performance of the setup you are running but it's not a crutch that's going to make you just overall a better end user right you can't look at it like that. These are things to help you in just the most minute ways to make you faster and especially under stress, you know, doing stress reloads and speed reloads and stuff like that. That's where something like a Magwell really does help you out. It will also help you keep a higher and tighter grip on the pistol because as you can see that edge right there is capturing my pinky. So again, it's going to help you mitigate that felt recoil, keep the muzzle flatter and keep those sights on target for those fast follow-ups. But there are some things you need to look for when it comes to a magwell, and that's going to be the inner surface, that actual funnel. You don't want those massive like wind tunnel competition magwells. You want something intermediate like this, but you don't want hard edges on the inside. So when you go in, you just hit another hard edge. The whole purpose of this magwell is to have a funnel so you can just slam the magazine in there. Even if you're say a little bit off, it just really helps guide that in there, especially when the mag has rounds in it. So make sure when you're checking out magwells, the interior should be as smooth as possible. Now, when it comes to the SLR, this will work with your factory Glock base plates. It will work with factory USA base plates, Terran tactical base plates, SLR base plates, of course, and several others. I think even the Tyrant ones work and a bunch of other ones. So that is something to take into account too. The fact that this is pretty much universal with the most widely carried magazine extensions out on the market today. One of my personal favorite parts about the SLR is the screw they use on the back right there. You can see it is flush fit, it is flat, it's got a wide head on it, so it evenly distributes the force on there. So much better than some of the other companies use those big button heads that just kind of suck and actually can tear up your hand right there after long, long days at the range. So our performance factors here with the Magwell, faster reloads, better grip, helps with recoil mitigation, and works with our most carried you know, magazine extensions out there. If you're carrying some weird thing I don't know about, I don't know. But all the ones I've tried in it, they work with this Magwell. And I think all of those things are serious positives with something that you can add to your pistol and doesn't have anything to do with the moving parts in it. Next up, and this is where it gets spicy, is going to be that Overwatch trigger right there. Because some people love putting triggers in there and some people don't. Because I don't know why, but some people get really wrapped around the axle because out there in the ether, they've heard that if you put a trigger in your pistol or your rifle, that somehow that's going to be used against you in a court of law someday in a criminal case, and it's going to put you in jail. I don't know where that rumor started, but I have asked city, state, and federal prosecutors about that. I have scoured the internet for a case, and what I have actually found is there's case law in Arizona, actually, that says... You can't use things like that against somebody in a court of law because it's inflammatory because either the use of force was justified or was not justified. So the part didn't have anything to do with it. Now, if you've heard something else, feel free to educate me in the comments. I have asked James Reeves. He's a lawyer specifically dealing with gun rights. I've asked prosecutors, like I said, and I have yet to have somebody show me a case or tell me, yes, that can be used against you in a criminal proceeding. Um, but we are in weird times and going forward, I guess it could be something to think about. However, I know for a fact that this overwatch trigger is not only approved locally by law enforcement agencies, both county, city, state, but also some federal entities 
and so is Apex, which is kind of weird because they're both in Arizona. So if this is good to go for federal and law enforcement, why isn't it good to go for you? Now, I personally probably have six of these Overwatch triggers in different configurations and colors, and I have yet to have one fail me. Now, when it comes to the trigger, what does it do for you? It's going to shorten the take up, maybe give you a little bit of a cleaner break and reset on there. So the overall travel of that trigger will change based on the internal geometry of the trigger design. What lightens out the trigger, and these are kind of gross overall things, is going to be the connector in the rear. That's going to have to do more with weight than the actual trigger body and uh, the trigger bar. What I will say is I really like to stick with a factory Glock minus connector. It gives you about a four half pound break, a little under five when you're well broken in, sometimes down to four, four and a half. But I feel that is a very good consistent place to be, but that Glock factory minus connector with the Overwatch trigger gives you an extremely consistent pull and break, which is very important when it comes to repetition of trigger pull. And of course, it feels a ton better than the factory trigger does. So knowing all that, I think we can agree that this is a duty and performance driven trigger because it's out there for duty use in the world today. And it's definitely one that I trust my life to, if not daily, weekly when I'm carrying. Our performance gains here are going to be speed, maybe a little bit of accuracy, a far more consistent trigger pull. And of course, it's just gonna feel a ton better on your actual trigger finger than that gnarly Glock trigger, which gives people blisters. And now we delve into the optics world again. This gets spicy because some people love them, some people hate them. The Trigicon RMR, this is an RM06 Type 2. Hands down, I think we can all agree this is probably the most durable, reliable, proven optic out there. I know they've got the new designs out now, but this is the one that's on here and it just functions flawlessly. I think we've all seen people like Aaron Cowan beat them to death, thousands and thousands of rounds, six foot drop tests like 10 or 12 times on concrete. The RMR is just flat out gonna function and work. It is a absolute go-to war style optic. There are definitely more budget friendly optics out there like the Hollow Sun stuff, which is proving to be very durable and reliable as well. But if you want a US made optic that's just proven beyond belief, the Trigicon RMR is the one to go to. Now, what does the optic give us? Well, once you get used to using a red dot and staying target focused, it's gonna make you a lot faster, like a lot faster. And also it's going to make you more accurate, especially for people like me that have maybe an astigmatism, or maybe you're a little bit older, you've got some years under your belt and your eyes just aren't quite as good as they used to be. Something like a dot on your pistol is really going to be a huge level up when it comes to accuracy, rather than trying to switch focus points on rear sight, front sight, target. Dots are just the modern way to go. And remember for all of my naysayers, People used to say they would never put a red dot on their rifle, and that's just the standard, not only in militaries around the world, but in the civilian market as well. This is the future, this is the now, and that's just where things are going. Irons will get the job done, but optics just level it up. Well, we're going back to the Radian Corporation now with their new Guardian Plus 6. So what is this thing? It looks kind of interesting, it's on the front. It's actually pretty awesome. So this is an integrated mounting plate with sights built into the front of it. And there are several different reasons why this is a really good way to go as far as an optics mounting platform and a sighting system for a duty grade pistol. The Guardian Plus 6 is really right now probably the ultimate in strength when it comes to mounting an optic to a Glock style pistol with its like extremely beefy capture bolt design on there. It's gonna protect your optic glass from the front and overall optic housing for those one-handed manipulations or emergency manipulations, or should this thing get dropped. It also has that iron sight in the front of the optic window as the sighting system and a blacked out front sight. Now for me, this helps me stay target focused because if you think about it, I am not now having to put the gun up, see rear sight, look through, see front sight, see dot, all of that stuff goes away um, because as I come up, I just see glass and then kind of in the haze once I'm target focused, you might see those sights. But I find that if I have a rear sight that's real tall on the rear and the front sight and my dot, I will always catch that rear sight first. And could that be trained out of me? Yes, but I want, again, every advantage possible in a stressful situation to make me as fast and accurate as could be. And quite honestly, the factory MOS plates really do suck. Another advantage is you don't have to use a ceiling plate. I still have one on here just for testing purposes. But based on the design here and these rubberized O-rings they have in there, you technically don't need a ceiling plate with the RMR to keep the thing waterproof, which is actually a very cool design of how they've done this. Again, not a full review on that, but there's a ton of other good stuff built into this thing. 
That's just the way it is. So what are our performance gains here? One, it's gonna make sure your optic and the glass is absolutely protected. For those eye issues out there, especially stigmatisms where your eye wants to bounce back and forth on focal points, having that optic iron sight in the front there of the glass and everything really does just help me out. Whether it'll help you out, I don't know. That's just something that I have personally found in my testing going from iron sights for years into pretty much everything having an optic now. And then of course, all of that stuff calculates back into speed, which is one of those things that we are all absolutely looking for when it comes to range performance. And of course, can't leave it out, the light on the front right there. So that is a stream light. I've carried all the big names when it comes to lights. Um, I've got Surefires, I run those as well, but Streamlight just seems to be the best bang for the buck in cost and performance. And lights are very subjective with what you like, what you don't like, buttons, activation, whatever you want out there. But also, this is not like tactics, right? So these are not general searchlights. They were never meant to be general searchlights and you should never use a pistol or weapon mounted light as a general searchlight. They're for positive target identification. And that is the big performance factor when it comes to adding one to a system. Also, it will add some weight to the front end of the muzzle, which again, with everything is gonna help control muzzle rise. However, always remember your firearms fundamentals, not a searchlight, positive identification only. I know down in the comments, somebody has already said, you'll never find a holster that that fits. Well, here is the thing when it comes to this entire setup. Radian specifically designed this comp and barrel to fit a 19 or a Glock 45 slide, so it fits in a Glock 17 holster. So this will fit your traditional Glock 17 Gen 5 style holsters. Now I've tried this in the Safari Land holsters. You can see all the videos I'm drawing from a retention holster and almost all of them. I've tried them in the CompTAC CT3s and the Alien Gear Rapid Duty Force holsters. No issues, they just run in all of them because that's how this entire system was designed, was to fit modern duty holsters because all of these parts are built for performance on a duty style pistol. So I guess you could say this is like Tacta Gucci, but not like Gucci because it's really just built around performance, not necessarily looks, even though it looks pretty awesome. All right, so what does this all really mean? And of course, what does all of this actually cost? Because that's where the rubber meets the road. What it means is the ultimate in performance, reliability, speed, and accuracy. Those are the things that really matter. And some of you out there know that Glock is not my first choice when it comes to a pistol, but you can absolutely not in any honesty deny the absolute durable, reliable tool that Glock is. So this is not about me and what I like. This is about the ultimate performance duty driven Glock in the market. So when it comes to the cost of these items, let's go ahead and do the rundown on the prices. Now, this is the time to make sure you have a friend close by that can help you from fainting or get an AED because some of you out there, your heart might skip a beat when you hear all of these costs combined. Also, remember all this stuff's gonna be at the parts list, first link in the description so you can do all your own research, pick anything up, and of course there's some ways there to bring these costs down. Starting off with a Glock 19 or 45 MOS, whichever one you choose, you're gonna be right at about 650 for that Gen 5. That SLR Magwell is gonna come in at 90 bucks. The Guardian optic mount with sights is going to be 209. If you get just the optic mount Guardian itself without the backup sights, 159. The Radiant Afterburner Ramjet, 389. The Trigicon RMR Type 2 is gonna be 507. The Streamlight's 140 and the Overwatch trigger is 134. So hold on to your seats. The overall cost of this to include the pistol comes out to 2119. So you can carry the two, add the change up, round up. Basically, let's call it 2120. So that's pretty much the cost of a base model non-optioned out staccato with no options on it. So I guess instead of a 2011, we call this a 2120 Glock. So is this right here what I call the ultimate duty Glock for everybody? Heavens to Betsy no, right? This is definitely not for everybody, but if you are trying to squeeze every ounce and little tiny fraction of performance while maintaining all the reliability, functionality, and accuracy out of a pistol, I think this is like the magical mix of parts. Like I said, I've been literally testing some of these things, some of these parts for years and others like the newer stuff, the Ramjet and the Optic Guardian here for thousands of rounds. So I have no problem carrying this thing around all day and knowing that it's going to be there when I need it and it's going to work just like it came out of the factory with a lot better performance. Now a real question for another day is how does this $2,120 performance duty Glock package here hold up to something like the Walther PDP SD Pro which pretty much comes with all of that stuff 
on a duty pistol from the factory at 800 bucks. All we need to do is add a comp. So maybe that's a video for another day. All right, so make sure you let me know in the comments down below if you stroked out a little bit when you heard the overall cost of this thing, because I'm sure some people just lost it in the comments, turned into the chimpanzee and started throwing feces all over the wall in their grandmother's basement. <laughs> make sure you get subbed up down below. If you want to support the channel in any way, you can check out the Patreon, any of the links down below, or any of the links over at my website, tacticalconsiderations.com. You keep doing it out on the range. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. I will see you all on the next one.